container building. I, I'm just, we've been looking, we talked about it. We talked about tiny homes. And so when I saw your post and we also have some connections in Ghana. So when I saw that, I was just like, yeah, I need to, I need to talk to her. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. So firstly, congratulations on you all wanting to do container projects. That is so important in my world because there's just not enough black people thanking green right now. So thank you. I like, I, I can't say thank you enough because literally we're at a point of extinction we have to go green or we're going to die. And so mm -hmm. the fact that you guys are already wanting to get into that space, that is amazing to me. Uh, we've been in the space for about 10 years. I'm a project manager previously on container projects. And then we started the construction part for our own company about six years ago. We're in our sixth year. We're excited. Wow. Yay. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm excited. And, you know, you know, the level that we're trying to go to is honestly at the most honest way, just trying to take over right now, because as people in green construction, it's really um, tough when you're fighting against other cultures that are in the same space. So the more of us that's in it, it just helps. And even outside of that, we have a very diverse team. So it's not like we're just all black people. We got black and brown people. We all came together. And we're, look, we're in this space pretty heavy with everything that's green. We have water technology. We have energy technology. We have the housing. We got farming technology. And so anything that a community would need infrastructure-wise, we do have that in-house with our, our lovely consortium of companies. That is awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about us. So Ascenta, we kind of came together because of like-minded and like-hearted people. We recognize that our community is getting pushed further and further behind. Yeah. We recognize that gentrification was something that was used to increase that, that wealth gap. Um, so we were passionate about being able to go in and revitalize those areas and using like the community benefiting from it instead of someone from the outside coming in, buying Big Mama's house for pennies on the dollar, jacking the price up, you know, putting a Starbucks on the corner. And now the people from that area can no longer afford that. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it, it started. And just us realizing that there was a lack of education amongst our community regarding the, even the incentives and the set-asides that are minority set-asides, they just don't know about them. Mm -hmm. So we are a group of developers, um, real estate brokers, we have real estate attorney, architect, solar panel um, provider. So we just have come together and we're kind of, um, we, we just keep seem to be growing with people coming in because what we've determined is we are more powerful together. That's right. So instead of us, you know, you have your company over here and they have their development company. We, we figured out we could come together. It makes it easier to get funding, to get bids on different projects, because um, you have the portfolio of everyone that's involved in the company. That's right. So for us, you know, right now we're just looking at all the different, because there's so many things that you're right, that you don't see us in those spaces. And we're determined to be in the room and to be in those spaces because we're spending the money. Yeah we're spending the money. So um, like personally, even like it's a few of us when I told them that I was talking to you, they were like, please get all the information because I have this piece of land and I was thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we need to, we need to try and figure it out. So I did have a, just, you know, a couple of little questions. Sure. So at this point, is there any um, funding other than like in-house funding um, like w how far are we in this? Is it coming close to where traditional is in terms of the, the process itself or what are some of the differences? So that sounds like two questions in one. So help me understand. What do you mean about the first half of the question? So are you asking, is there any funding outside of what we offer as in-house fund financing? 
is there FHA conventional? Is there traditional methods? Like, is it just a construction to perm? And if so, you know, is there a limit as far as, you know, FHA, VA, conventional? Like, what are some of the things you've run in on, on like that side? Um, so let me just break it down by the types of loans that we've encountered already. So VA loans don't have an issue. Um, as long as the veteran knows what all goes into that construction process, we're adding ourselves to the builder list for two regions now, because that's one thing that has to happen. And then the other half is that that person just have to be, um, basically, um, I don't know. I guess they just basically have to make sure that they can afford whatever the cost is, if that makes sense. And so VA loans aren't complicated. Then we got, um, I dealt with a USDA loan. USDA loan um, requires a lot of the buyer. Um, they have to pay for their own blueprints. Um, they The other side to it, as a builder, they require us to pay for things up front that we're not willing to pay for. Um, mm -hmm. So we didn't get very far on that type of loan. We did get far, and then the customer wanted all this extravagant stuff that wasn't in their budget. So we didn't move forth with that particular loan. But again, it was a learning process. So mm -hmm. USDA loan allows it as well. Um, then traditionally, um, it depends on the bank in general. It's, uh, to us, it's a construction to perm loan. However, okay. because banks are lazy, um, most banks don't understand how to appraise them. We're not building no out of the ordinary thing. We're building with steel versus wood. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. exact process is the same. There is nothing. We're not using no fancy plumbing mechanisms, fancy uh, electric, none of that. It is all built the same way that traditional electricians and plumbers build. Um, and so even the build itself typically appraises higher. So when you don't have a lazy mortgage company, the appraisal for these are much higher than stick bricks are. Um, and so from that perspective, a person that's going to get an actual loan can feel very confident that their house is going to appraise higher. Insurance companies love them because they're not going to burn down. They're not going to exactly. flood. Exactly. That's they're exactly not, what we were thinking. And they're, they're not like, going to fly away. Yeah, because so, I have a, a VA. I've been pre-approved for a VA construction loan myself, like personally. Okay. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So that's that was also kind of a personal side yeah. to make sure, yeah. you know, can I just use my VA loan to do it? I think it's amazing, especially here in Florida. Okay. Um, you know, when you're talking hurricane and I mean, where's that going to go? Yeah, like, where's that? Where's that still built? <laughs> Your house be the only one still standing, literally, and that's terrible though. Because look how many times people that lived in these communities have had their whole lives, you know, washed away, and now they're you know struggling trying to get it rebuilt again. And so I don't know. I know why. Um, nobody cares. Governments don't care mm -hmm. to build better. Um, they just like it's the money. It's the money grab. It's all about insurance. Money. So. Yeah, so it's all about it's all about money. And I because I'm thinking like in, in terms of insurance, because Florida is having such a big issue with homeowners insurance because of all the hurricanes and everything and our crazy governor allowing them to turn down claims for whatever reason. So to have something still built, I would think insurance companies would really like that because my my thought is and this is just kind of what we were kicking around because we had a meeting yesterday and I was like, it would be great to have a. Uh, container community mm -hmm. um you know because that's what we're looking at at doing is community so we've got a few projects that are, you know 140 town homes or you know 120 homes is what we're propo proposing or 50 homes or whatever but i would love to have a community yeah um uh, with with container built so you guys have a plant there in georgia is that what i read we're opening our first plant that'll be open by january first of its kind in the world by the way Black and minority owned. That's all I need to say. That's huge. And so That's huge. I'm excited. And that will allow for us to build faster. So right now we do everything site built. If we have a manufacturing plant, we can get projects done in record time. So that's what we're moving exactly. forward. Now, what's the build time? That was one of the other questions. What kind of build time? So if we had to build on site four to six months, um, if we're building in a plant, it'd probably go down to 30 days. So I'm just giving you an idea 
of the difference. And the four to six months, to be honest with you, is mainly a supply chain thing. So if someone likes really big custom windows, those have to be cut and transported. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. certain elements of the bill, if it's super custom, is what takes time. So we can't control that part. Yeah. What would you say your average, if you were just going straight, you know, kind of standard um, appointments on it, what would be your average like price per square foot, would you say? for 125 uh, to 150 per square foot. Ooh -wee. Yeah. Ooh -wee. We can reverse that's, that's gentrification easily. That's my goal. Um, the way that we build and the cost that it it is to us to build. We can reverse gentrification. I can go to any, I'm a hater. I can go to any of these same communities where all these other people building these buildings and build something bigger and better for less than they're selling it for. And that's my goal. That's, you know, we want to challenge developers to stop price gouging because they can't afford to build. You shouldn't be building. <laughs> Exactly. It is exactly. what it is. You try and get your money back. You shouldn't be building that's, if you can't afford to build. And now crazy costs is going passed on to the customer. So black, white, whomever, the housing market is struggling because people really shouldn't be just because you think of it don't mean you should be doing it. And just the and as a result, you're finding these astronomical prices around things that shouldn't even cost that much. If it costs you Anywhere close to what you sold it for to build, you shouldn't have built it. Like you mm -hmm. gotta find it. It gotta be a better way for you to build if it's costing you that much. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm seeing so much stuff, but I'm on my business because I know what my goal is, and I'm just going to have to challenge the status quo when it comes to development. That's it. That's exactly that's what we're trying to do. That's mm -hmm. our focus. Because our thing is, if you focus on the community and you focus on the problem, we, the money will come because it's real estate. We're not concerned about that. Mm -hmm. What we're concerned about is what's happening in our community because it goes beyond housing and it affects everything. Why do you think our young men have no hope? Yeah. So we want to we want to bring them into more skilled labor. So we also have a, a school. Because that was one of the things I wanted to ask, too, um, because in that school, it will be, you know, like general contracting. We're going through for a provisional license. Originally, our vision for the school was like certified apartment maintenance technician. Like that's okay. kind of what we were doing it for. And then just in a few months with the people we've met and the things we've become involved in, I'm a licensed real estate instructor. So now we're like, OK, it's going to be a real estate school. Yeah. And now the general contractors are like, we want to have plumbing, electrical, mechanical. We want the MEP. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to have that training. So I was like, well, if I'm going to have that, we might as well have the full general contractors course. Yeah. So then see yours, I was like, okay, that's a whole nother skill set yeah. in still building. That's a whole nother one. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, but these are things because the way that you create a seat at the table is you build the damn table. Yeah, that's real. And the fact and that you all are, what you all are doing with the education piece is typically the missing piece. So now I see, you know, all these, I call them fake gurus on internet beefing with each other about things that they've partaken in the real estate world. It's sad to see because some of them are from my old city and I'm just like, y'all are embarrassing the city. Y'all look crazy. Y'all on a newspaper called being called scammers. And I'm just like, what is going on? And so I say all that to say I'm proud of you guys for taking on that particular task because the education is the most important part. One thing I don't want from people is them to say, oh, I want I have customers that they thought they knew what goes into building a home until they actually had to go through it. And they tapped out, you know, and I'm like, I understand you tapped out, but you already done got a heart inquiry on your credit. You done got this far, like keep going, you know, and that's the reality is just the lack of education that puts people in this space. It sounds good that people want to build a container home. I get it. It sounds great. But the reality is, is that you're still building a home. So you have to become knowledgeable about something. You may not be the general contractor, but you need to know what the general contractor is doing to make sure exactly. they know what they're doing. Otherwise, exactly. you don't even know what these people building. And so we're so education heavy they get tired of us. I'm like, look, did you do your homework? I give my customers homework. I do not play with them. They be mad and I'll be on a hill. You're like, too. you're gonna be in this process right along yeah. with us. You're gonna I, be right. That's awesome. They don't even realize that this is so um 
historical for them to be doing it at this level that they need to be in the process. You can't just passively do this. It's just not, it's impossible. At least not with our company. You don't get okay. off that easy. <laughs> okay. Well, and then one of the other things we talked about too was um, because we're looking at building the, the school because mm -hmm. we're going to have a location and we'll be stuck there for a year because once you get your provisional license, you have to stay at the campus for a year. But we want to build one because that way we can have everything we want. We have a mock-up apartment, house, that kind of thing. I, we talked about it being a steel building. How cool would that be to have a school mm -hmm. that's a steel building? Now, the only thing with schools is they have the 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 fire rating, you know, like you they they have those crazy inspections. But I would think you the steel building would actually do better than stick built for that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sorry, I was drinking my watermelon juice, no. but definitely it will rate way higher. It's first of all, all that stuff you see on TV with like uh September 11th when it's in how 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 do you think the twin towers burnt down come on like come on no comment <laughs> so i'm just giving you an example like that that wouldn't even happen in the real world <laughs> so you got to know that it was beyond just some fire that got it to that level those fire rating on those buildings are so ridiculously high i don't foresee you guys having any challenges with that Awesome. 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 And then like if I, on my personal side, wanted to um, move forward, I would like, what's the best course of action? What's the, what's the next step? Well, for one, I would schedule a, a true consultation with our team. Well, mm -hmm. no, let's get, let's go back. For starters, do you have land? I do not have the land. That's where you would need to start. So on our website, shippingliving.com, we have a section called Start Here. Start Here has a checklist on there of things that you can do to kind of work your way through this process before you even get to us. Excuse me. One, I don't even suggest people even come to us until they have the land, because if we don't know where you're going to build that, we're literally we're talking so hypothetical that it would be just be a waste of time. I'm just being honest. And so I suggest people find about three to five plots of land that they're interested in, um, then narrow it down to about one or two, and then start that process. Before they start the process, they can just call us like how we're talking now without a consultation. And even on that list, it'll tell you certain things that you would need to get done during your due diligence period, just to make sure you can actually build. For us, we will need a geotechnical soil report. We need a topography survey um, because we need to know if you can actually build a container. Your land could be all mush and you would not know if you never got those things done. And so that's the challenge. Even with traditional builds, people don't typically get all those things done. They, and in fact, I'm from Philly and there's a part of Philly that actually, um, eventually had to be um, vacated because it was sinking. It was turning into a sinkhole because they should have never built on it in the first place. Everywhere in our country is water. So that's not the issue. But where does the water start is the issue. And as you are building on it, keeping in mind that the weight of those buildings will shift the earth is shifting in general and so that kind of those reports let us know if you can actually do the build basically yeah i've been i've actually been a um uh an agent for 22 years um and got my broker's license earlier this year so i've done construction and custom building yeah so when i tell you even going from new construction like lennar i worked for them for 10 years and then going to custom it is it, it is a different kettle of fish Mm -hmm. because to get familiar with those kinds of things, especially here in Florida where you may have some water. So you're looking at, you know, they have the coastal water protection. So it's certain ways you have to build, whether it's a stilt built or something like that yep. in case of flooding. Um, and then just really looking at the land and understanding, excuse me, certain trees like the oak, you know, that you can't tear down here. Um, and knowing what, where your buildable pad is and understanding, you know, because production building, it was like you had the pot plan for the community, but you already knew those were lots you could build on. You know, yeah. you had the stacks, all of that. But with custom building, each piece of land is unique. 
and you need to see where the utilities are and you need to, you know, do you have to do well, septic? It's a lot of considerations that people don't know. Yeah. So I have uh, some buyers that just got a, their custom home, you know, will start building here in the next month or so, I guess, once their loan is closed mm -hmm. and just being able to give them the information that I learned, I was like, I see why people get frustrated with the building process <laughs> yeah. because, they're, because their agents or whoever they're dealing with doesn't set the expectation and doesn't educate them. Yeah. So they know what to expect. So in their mind, they feel like I signed the paper, I gave you money, loan closed, you should start building. I should see some sticks, some dirt, some, they don't know yeah. permitting process and you know, building up the pad and that it'll be a while. You won't see anything, but there's things happening on the back. But that's what the agent yeah, or the, the builder is supposed to prepare them for, you know. But, yeah, it can be very frustrating mm -hmm. that, that and so many, uh, things that can happen. So, again, setting the right expectation. But I really I'm really, really interested on the personal side. And then I'm interested for a sense of development. So what I'd like to do, because I know they're going to want to talk to you. Yeah, I want to talk. Let's call with everybody. First. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their thing was like, you know, love you, you talk to it. And, uh -huh. and see what <laughs> so I'm the VP of sales and marketing. Okay. So we have, of course, our VP of construction and then our president. Um, he is, his background is mortgage. So again, we have people with 20 years experience in every discipline okay. you can think of for real estate that have just collectively come together. Nice. So I, I have their own questions and try and figure out how we can partner up and, you know, maybe do some, some things here in Florida, yeah. um, our to expand what we're trying to do, um, nationally where you see minorities, black and brown developers, you know, agents, all of us collectively coming together to solve this problem. And if we did, if we ever did, because that's that's one of the things that they've had the advantage is understanding the true power of networking and connecting. There's a reason they meet on golf courses yeah. and in bars and make deals. We have been shy from doing that and we need to do a better job of doing that because we're, we're here we're in these spaces but we don't talk to each other yeah so that's one thing we're working on is getting us what we talk and it's not even we got to do business together it's we can help one another even if we're not yeah. doing business you know we can introduce each other to different connections we can especially if we're in different areas we're not in competition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for us it's i'm in a group called women in real estate wire for short and one of our big things is collaboration over competition. That's that's Simple. how we win. Simple and yeah. powerful. That's it. That's mm -hmm. how we win by collaborating. So I will get with them, see kind of what their scheduling is. Okay. Um, on what they'd like to, and we'll do it like in a conference room, and you know, it'll be a bunch of us. <laughs> okay, great. I look so forward can, to it. Yeah, and then for the Ghana. We have a separate company called Richer Nation Ghana, and they're looking at, you know, I guess there's a really big push now in African countries um, where they, they want to make sure they're getting, if anybody's going to get the dollars, it's going to be the black dollars. Yeah. Because um, they realize how much they've been raped and pillaged over the years, mm -hmm. um, how some of their leaders have helped that to happen. Okay. So there's been a really big push in a lot of those countries to connect with African Americans. Yeah. Try and do development and different things that way. So looking at your um the uh the the farming thing, that one too. I definitely want to learn more about that just in areas, urban areas where you can't or for soils for whatever reason you can't. I want to know about that and like, you know, that one I'm assuming is already set up with some kind of irrigation drip system mm -hmm. it's hydroponics so it's a automated system once it's it's like a business in a box to be honest with you it's not really designed for people to do manual labor other than to remove the crop once it grows and it grows every 21 days and so for people who are in farming um this is a, a non-traditional way to have faster crops at bigger um i say specs like Let's think of what you grow in the ground, how long that takes. This minimizes the time and it causes, it creates a larger crop yield and larger crop sizes, meaning the fruit of the actual item. So your leaves are larger, your 
everything is because it's in a controlled environment and there's no um, pesticides. It's all beyond organic. It, you literally could take it off and eat it straight from off the vine. And then you can watch it grow. So if you put like a GoPro in there and do like a mm-hmm. time lapse, you can see the entire process from seed to sprout. So here, the way we're offering it to the world, it's, it will be a part of development projects. Uh, we're building some smart cities. And so everybody will have a farm in their backyard. Um, and then it also allows for farmers to pivot. So the challenge that farmers are having right now, their their yields are dying our weather is created by the government to kill everybody's crops. That's why they're letting uh, Bill Gates buy everything up so he can control the food. And so by, and even that they, if you don't grow a certain way, they penalize you. And if you grow a certain way, they actually give you tax credits. And so like Mm -hmm. you offset your cost. So depending on what you choose as a farmer, you really aren't winning. And so people need to move to the vertical farm business model because of that. You can control and do what you want. The government can't say what you can and can't do. And because it's very low maintenance, there's nothing you really have to do once it's set up. You can give your crops out to whoever you want, charge whatever you want, and the government don't have no say. When they know you're a registered farmer, they are going to be on your head and they're going to harass you and you can only grow a certain way. And so Mm -hmm. if if people are really into farming and they can get over their thoughts around not growing in soil, they will be... Very, very much so wealthy again, like our ancestors were when they used to have traditional farms back in the day. It's just without soil. They don't realize that these chemtrails is real. There's no conspiracies out there around climate change. Everything is very accurate. And unfortunately, even the stuff that we get from our farmers is poison and we're eating it. We're ingesting it. And so this is the only way to get untainted fruits and vegetables. I'm off For my sure. How- box. <laughs> you do what's the smallest size on that 20 footer it's 60k our 40 foots are 80k and people can get as many units as they want typically each unit has up to i think a thousand small root systems in it so that means you can grow a thousand plants at once and because the lighting the water and technically the vitamin systems are all automated as long as you can check your app to make sure it ain't shut down, it will grow like clockwork. You wouldn't even have to bother it. Wow. That's a game changer. Definitely. Thank you. That, that real, that, that is a, cause I've been looking at hydroponics and I go to, cause I, I farm or garden, I should say. So, cause my thought is just like you once, once I started seeing like with the COVID thing, I'm a firm believer that was a uh, population control mechanism that just got out of hand. They developed it in the lab in Wuhan. There's too many connections to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. You know, I, know. I tell people you, you, they're trying to get us one way or the other. Yeah. Now and they're look trying- how extreme they went with Maui. Look how extreme they went. They done put some kind of mechanism in the sky so the sun gets so hot, it just fries people. That's why so many people died in their cars. How does a person die? When have you ever seen a car? So in Georgia, for some reason, on the side of the road, you always see people burnt up cars. You have never seen tires melted down into the ground like that. Fires don't do that. And so I'm just trying to share that they're getting more and more extreme with their methods and how they're taking us out because they understand the richness is in the land. If I live the rest of my life and never build another thing, having land is the key to my success. People think it's having an upward structure and it's not. It's the land. And that's why they're over there killing them people in Maui. It is. It's definitely the land. I tell people that it's, this is the time to really try because they're trying to take all the land. Yeah. That's that. The housing market, all of this is, to me, all of this is part of it. And it's not so much the president, it doesn't matter who's in that office. It's the riches of the rich. They're the ones that control everything. And people just need to understand that really the most important color is green. Yeah, that's all that matters. We And that's, and unfortunately, um, Martin Luther King realized that right before, probably the day he died when he gave his last burning house um, chat, um, that's when he realized that that he'd been leading us into a bur- a burning house, trying to encourage us to be civil and and nonviolent and all that. And it was about money, and it was too late. They killed him like the same day or the next day. 
Like he already, he must've knew his death was coming. And so he had that particular speech to kind of enlighten black people, but we still ain't listening. So you see where we are now. <laughs> because they, they took anything positive. I look at, you know, cause I'm 51. So I'm old enough to remember when hip hop first came out and it was all positive. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it was it was good messages. It was bringing us together. It was talking about stopping the violence. It was talking about good times and 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 loving each other. And it was all positive. And then they introduced gangster rap into that and turned rap into something they can use to further perpetuate whatever myths they want mm -hmm. about black people. You know, I tell people you got to look a little deeper yep. at some things. The, yep. the media is explicit. Like I get my news overseas. I I look at a lot of overseas papers and I find different spins than what they have in the U.S. papers. We really, as much as we talk about different countries and the propaganda, we have the biggest propaganda machine of anybody mm -hmm. in any country. The United States does. Mm -hmm. And citizens realize how much they've been lied to over the years, because it doesn't matter if you're Democrat or, or Republican, those guys go out and have drinks mm -hmm. at the club at the end of the night while we're fighting and calling each other liberal and MAGA and conservative and this and that. They they they're on they're really on the same side because same they're thing making with judges and lawyers, all yep. of that. You're right. You're yeah. you're exactly right. so money rules the world. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. So I think. We can, that's that's our big focus, and it sounds like that's a big focus for you as well. Yeah. So again, it's we kind of are aligned um, in similar ways, and we we would love to see what we can do together. Okay, um, and how we can we can all grow because again, collaboration over competition. Absolutely, thank you. And so for you um, personally. Um, if you go back to that link on our website, shippingliving.com and click on start here, it kind of gives you that checklist. Um, I am about to add some other things in there that I noticed that isn't on the site anymore, just to give people who are doing residential builds to understand what those construction steps are. And also like a little deck so that they can see something visually. Um, and then on a res commercial side, same thing um, with your group, whenever you have the discussion about when you guys want to meet, just let me know. And then I can absolutely, without a doubt, um, schedule that time. Um, I only need like three or four days in advance. I don't schedule like weeks out because that's not even at the top of my mind. Um, I live in the present. Um, so if you say, hey, Jessica, we can do something for, you know, three days from now, that's fine. I wouldn't need a whole bunch of notice. I just don't schedule that far out. Life be life in. So, I yeah, it really forgot about the meeting, if, especially if it don't pop up in my calendar. So when we choose a date, we'll make sure it's in the calendar so I know to actually be present for it. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank I you. learned a lot. I'm looking forward, even on my personal side, I am looking forward. I'm excited because the, this I had never thought about like the windows and the big, nice decks. And the so looking at that stuff, I was just like, that's a container house? Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, that in a container house so yeah I'm, I'm excited <laughs> thank you i'm excited for you feel free to reach out anytime i'm gonna text you did i give you my telephone number personal i don't think so i'll text that to you now I don't, did you replied yes you did you you replied i think yesterday okay. and put that in so yeah. texting is the easiest way you may call me if i can't pick up i'm gonna most likely ignore the call and a lot of people don't like to leave messages. So if you text me or email us, yeah. that's the easiest way to get a response and we'll schedule that when you all are ready and same for you. Sounds good. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You as well. Alrighty. Bye. Bye-bye.